there everybody welcome back to my channel so in this video is going to be another do's and don'ts for how to draw a face so here are the final two versions so we've got the don'ts on the left hand side and then the do's and if you guys want to see the full do drawing in real time with voiceover then that is available for you guys over on my patreon link will be in the description so you can follow along every step of the way and so for this one I thought I would do the full portrait for both the do's and the don'ts and talk through in a bit more detail some tips for things that you can do to improve your drawings as well as show you some more slower clips so it's not all fully sped up so let's get straight into this with the don'ts first and the first don't and thing to avoid if you're a beginner is starting by sketching one feature and then shading it and then moving on to the next feature so if you do this then you're probably not going to get your proportions accurate but by this time you've already started shading in one of the eyes so it's hard to completely erase it and then your paper won't stay clean because you're trying to erase something that you've already shaded in so instead of just trying to sketch one feature one eye and then completely shade it get it to perfection and then move on and do it feature at a time try and just do a proportional sketch of the whole portrait and then start to shade it in and get an accurate sketch first. I would also avoid shading too heavily at the start so as you can see at the moment I'm doing the pencil strokes a bit too sort of harsh and dark and messy and then I'm blending with my finger and blending with your finger isn't great because you can transfer oils onto the paper. Another thing that I'd avoid is outlining all of the features. If you're going for realism and I am only talking about realistic drawing in this sort of video I'm not on about people that are doing different styles and that's different if you're trying to get hyper realistic drawings then and this should apply to you but try to avoid outlining all of the features with heavy outlines especially like the sides of the nose or that sort of gap between the nostrils those areas don't need to be heavily outlined it's just subtle shading onto the mouth a few things that you want to avoid is firstly if you're drawing teeth you don't want to outline them with heavy outlines first because between the teeth this is a very difficult thing to do drawing teeth is extremely hard to do and so you want to try and avoid outlining all of those teeth also, a lot of the time people are really afraid to go too dark with their drawings and get in those rich dark values and so their drawing doesn't pop as much and look as realistic as if they was to go in with those shadows. So one mistake people make is just simply not getting in those dark tones. So as I'm drawing each feature you will see some reoccurring mistakes like outlining parts of the features like for example the inside of the mouth that center line is quite harshly done and the jawline it's just very harsh everything's outlined and with realism it's all about those soft subtle shadings and if you want to do outlines do that in the sketching stage and do it really nice and light. I quickly want to mention the eyes and eyebrows for a bit. So the eyebrows, what I did wrong there is I've just done it in a block sort of shape. I haven't gone in and done lots of individual eyebrow hairs. And same with the eyelashes, there isn't too much going on. There's not much direction to them. And so they don't look realistic at all. They're just kind of sketched in there. There's no real rendering to them. And also a few mistakes that I've made with the eyes is I haven't really got the shapes the same. They are very different looking and I haven't paid much attention to the white of the eye. There's not much shading there. And same with the iris. It's all just kind of sketched in. There's no real definition to them. One iris looks darker than the other. But moving on to the hair and the main issue that I see people do when they're beginners is they're just trying to fill it all in. Fill in the hair with the pencil going back and forth and it looks messy and it doesn't give a really realistic looking hair outcome. And so avoid going back and forth with your pencil as this does give you quite a streaky look to the hair. And even if you're intermediate or beginner, it's something that I see reoccurring a lot when I look at people's portraits. And also when people are trying to do the shadows, they just use that same technique going back and forth, but just apply more pressure on that same pencil rather than going into kind of darker pencils. Another mistake with hair is not looking and focusing on the direction the hair's going in and all of the clumps and sort of sections that make up the full head of hair. And so you can see that this hairstyle, when I've done the don'ts version, it doesn't have volume. It lacks volume. It just looks very flat and wiry and not smooth or realistic at all. And it doesn't look smooth because I've just been going back and forth. And so you will also want to avoid just doing lots of random pencil strokes. So 
you can see that it just looks very wiry because I've just done lots of random pencil strokes and I haven't really focused on building clumps. I've just gone in with the pencil and just started sketching random lines everywhere. So moving on to the skin, the main mistake is again doing messy pencil strokes that aren't going to lead you to getting smooth results. So when you blend this out, you'll still be able to see some of the streaky pencil strokes because Firstly, I've not done it light enough. You'll want to apply very light pressure with the pencil, otherwise you will get stubborn pencil strokes. Another thing is when people use this blending tool, the blending stump, again, like with the hair, they go back and forth. And what this does is it leaves stop and start points. So you get a very messy, muddy look to your drawings. They don't look smooth. And this is a problem and a frustration that beginners get when they're trying to do skin with blending stumps is it doesn't always look smooth. Sometimes it can go really wrong, especially if you have a lot of graphite on the blending stump and you kind of make the mistake to smudge it if you're smudging the hair like I was doing and then you smudge onto the skin and you get too much on there and it's harder to control. Moving on to the highlights, a main mistake with the highlights is doing them too harsh and not fading them out. So as you can see I'm using a Tombow Mono eraser which again is probably not the most useful and efficient eraser for this. It would be much easier to go in with a kneaded eraser because those erasers give such harsh kind of outcomes and it's harder to blend that out. So what I'm going to do is I will be using a black colour pencil in this portrait. I found that they are amazing to use with graphite drawings to get those intense dark blacks. But here I'm doing them in the wrong place. I'm not using and utilising that black pencil as best as I could. I'm using it to basically outline places and things that don't need the black pencil. The eyes needed them. Yes, it should have been on the eyes. I'm not making everything a mistake in this. But you can see that I've also added the black pencil to the sides of the nose, the, the side of the top of the nose by the eyebrows as well. And I'm using it as kind of like an outline, like a fine liner, like just trying to outline every feature. And this is fine if you're doing stylized work. And in my last video, I had a lot of people comment saying, oh, there's no do's and don'ts in art because it's just, the you know, everyone has different styles. But I'm not talking about every type of art. I'm talking about realism. And there are certain things that are going to stop you from getting a realistic look. That's just a fact. If you start outlining all of the features, it's not gonna look as realistic as if you were to create the soft shading and blending and transitions between tones that are in your reference photo. That's just fact. I'm not going on about too many techniques. I'm just going on about what's in the reference and what isn't in that reference. There's no harsh outlines in your reference image. So don't try to put harsh outlines just for the sake of it in your drawing. Really look at how those tones and values transition into each other. So again, once you've got in the black colored pencil, when you go and blend with that blending stump, you might get even more mistakes because once you start moving around that graphite or colored pencil on the hair, you're building up more and more pencil on your blending stump. And what this means is there's more room for error. And then people will think, okay, I need to erase that. So they go in with their eraser and try to erase that. And then you've got harsh sort of outlines of where your eraser's been and it just isn't smooth at all. So I would avoid using blending stumps for large areas. I kind of use them just for the small areas or something like hair, but I don't use blending stumps for skin because it's too unpredictable for me. But that is a personal choice. You can get realistic results with a blending stump, but I don't think it's the most easy and efficient way as a beginner to go about doing it, I would much rather use tissue than a blending stump because it's easier to control. But those are the basic sort of things to avoid and mistakes that I see beginners make. But I'm going to talk more about them and explain them as I go through the do version. So the most important thing when you're starting off a realistic drawing is to start with a great initial sketch. And as you can see, my sketch is a bit more complicated. I haven't just got the basic features sketched out, but I also like to sketch out the contour areas for the shadows and the highlights. So I know exactly where the main shadows are, for example, on the skin. I want to know where where those shadow, shadowed and contoured areas are, but also the highlighted areas. That is really important for me for when I go and shade it in. So I'm shading the eye to start with. You can see that my sketch is nice and light, so it won't come across too dark once I start shading. You won't be able to see all of those lines through. But what I do is I use a lighter pencil, like a B grade pencil, rather than dark pencils to do the light shading. And I just apply a smooth layer of that and then I go in with the blending stump and I either like to use circular motions 
or I like to just sweep the blending stump from one edge to the other. I try to avoid doing back and forth zigzag motions. And so again, I'm just using the pencil to build up layers. That is so important. Not trying to start really heavy and get everything done in one layer. As I'm doing the eyebrows, you can see that I'm kind of shading in the block area of where the eyebrow is, but I then go over and I will start to feather in the direction that the eyebrow hairs are going in, and I build up the eyebrow hairs rather than just leave it as one block sort of shape. Now moving into the iris, her iris was very dark, so I go straight in with the black coloured pencil. There's no need to necessarily layer lots of graphite on the iris and all of that. If you know it just needs to be really dark. So save some time and go in as dark as it needs to be if you know it's got to be dark. So her eye was pretty much like jet black. So I just went in straight in with that black pencil. I'm not afraid to go in and do those darks because... If it wasn't dark like it is in the reference, then it wouldn't look as good. So try to get over the fear of going in with those dark pencils. So as you can see, now I'm taking that black pencil and I'm using it to create the direction for the eyebrow hairs. And that is important to make it look realistic. Also to add the eyebrow hairs coming out of the skin, not just in one block shape, but add those few little stray eyebrow hairs to make it look a bit more natural. Her eyes were quite smoky as well, so it's important to look at how these shadows change and realise that there is a lot of shadow in things like the white of the eye. And in the other don't version, I didn't include much shading, especially around the eye area. But there is a lot of subtle changes in value, and so it's really important to look at how the values change and to replicate that, even if it's something that you think shouldn't be that dark, like the white of the eye, you might think that that's just white, but it might have a lot of grey tones to it. Another mistake that I didn't mention before is using blunt pencils, especially for detailed areas. So for example, I'm drawing the eyelashes right now and I'm using a very sharp pencil. There's no point trying to draw all of these little details like eyebrow hairs and eyelashes if you've got a blunt pencil, it's just not going to work. So make sure you're keeping your pencil sharp at all times. So I do use that Tombow Mono Eraser to get up the highlights because it's a small detailed area. I need a small detailed sort of eraser, but I don't use that eraser to do large sort of highlights in the skin. I'm just going to repeat the process for the other eye and it's a lot easier and they will look similar and the same sort of size and shape because I made sure that I started with an accurate sketch. And there's many ways that you can get an accurate sketch. So some of the methods that you can use is the grid method, very popular method for getting an accurate sketch. Quite often I will either freehand it because I don't like the drawing grid or I'll simply trace it. If you're not confident with your sketching process but you want to learn the shading, you want to get to grips with realistic shading, then why not just trace it? There's no sort of laws and rules. All you guys are telling me that there's no sort of rules and right ways to do art, but then there's such a high sort of stigma behind tracing and this sort of idea that it's cheating, whereas it's just a tool. If you can get it traced in like a few minutes and have it look perfect and accurate, why wouldn't you? It's To me, it's all about the final result rather than what you did to get there. And so... That doesn't, tracing doesn't do all of the hard work for you. You've still got to actually draw it, make it look realistic, but it's just a tool. And so if you guys don't like drawing and it's not your strongest area and you want to work on getting better at it, but you also want to practice your shading, then just trace if you want to. To me, there's no shame in doing it. And I won't kind of hide the fact that I do it quite a lot because if you're working professionally, quite a lot of the time you will need to get a lot of work done and you haven't got time to just justify and prove that you can freehand all the time. But anyway, back to the video. So now we're moving on to the nose and as you can see, I'm layering and layering. I'm not going in with any harsh outlines around the side of the nose. I just created the stronger shadows on the nostrils using that black pencil, but that is because they are dark and it was a bit more sort of outlines. It wasn't as soft in those areas. But you can see that at the sides of the nose, I'm keeping everything kind of fuzzy, not too outlined, the values are transitioning, and I've got a larger range of values than I did before. I'm now going to go in with the blending stump because it's a slightly more detailed area and I want to keep the structure to the nose and just blend it out with a relatively clean blending stump so it doesn't get too dark. 
But it's really important to look at the anatomy in your reference image and look at the way the shadows are formed on the nose because it will help make it look more that sort of shape with the nose because a few shadows in the wrong place can make your nose look a completely different shape. But anyway, as I'm doing the nose, I'm lightly building up these layers using a B-grade pencil. I don't go into those softer pencils until I need to make it darker because when you shade with softer pencils, it's not going to be as smooth. It's going to look more grainy. And so you, it's harder to hold that sharp point as well. You'll need to sharpen it more if it's softer. And so I keep layering, I keep blending with a blending stump, but also I love blending with tissue. If you want to get a really soft look, blend with tissue. That is great, it's cheap, it's affordable, it's something you have in your house and it's my favourite tool for blending graphite to get a realistic smooth look and it's my number one tool for drawing skin in particular as well. So I go in with the Tombow Mono Eraser to add the highlights but instead of just doing harsh harsh sort of outlines and highlights and leaving it like I did with the don'ts what you'll want to do is sweep a bit of tissue over that highlight to tone it down and to make those edges not so harsh and then you can go in a bit with that sort of eraser to pull up the brightest bits if you want to but those are my tips for drawing the nose it's all just about soft layering and shading picking out some of the darker areas like the nostrils making sure those are dark so that it pops but really avoid those harsh edges like at the eyebrow. You can see I've got those dark sort of contour shadowed lines, but they're not super harsh. They're not just outlines. They're soft shadows. They're a bit more intense. Moving on to the lips though, like I said, the main issue from before was simply obviously outlining things like the center line. So it's a bit more soft in this one. It's just a bit stronger at the corners. And so it's important to look at where those shadows and where those values actually do change. Is it just a simple dark line all the way through the center of the lips? Sometimes it is, but in this case, it wasn't. It's just darker at the edges. So don't always default to just drawing a dark center line on the mouth if you don't need to. And like with the teeth, you can see that it's very soft at the moment. I haven't got to the part where I've rendered the teeth a bit more, but I won't just outline them. I'm just making it very soft and soft shadows between the teeth, not a harsh outline at all. I'll use the blending stump to add some value. And as you can see, when I'm making the lips look fuller, I'm just using the pencil to layer some of the tone onto the upper lips and the shadows on the bottom lips. And then I just blend it out with the blending stump. And same with the skin above the lips as well. To create that sort of volume to the lips, you need to look at the skin between the nose and the mouth because that's a very important part of making your mouth look realistic. Because that sort of cupid bow, it lifts up and it makes your lips look fuller. So it's important to look at the highlights on that part as well there's normally a highlight just above the top lip but all of these features that I'm talking about I'm not going super in depth with them because I've got a video on how to draw an eye how to draw a nose do's and don'ts for the mouth for the hair all of that this is just an overall one for the face and like I said I wanted to do this video unlike the other do's and don'ts for a face where I actually do the do's for the whole portrait and then a don'ts as the whole portrait rather than half and a half as I think this will give you guys a better idea at how you can apply those techniques. So like I said if you want to go into more detail on do's and don'ts for mouth, nose, eyes and all of that sort of stuff I will link a playlist up above so that you can check that out because I'm just basically repeating the same things. But onto the skin. So with the skin this is one of the hardest things to get right but also one of the easiest but I find that people find it really tricky and I think people are just overthinking it. So go in with a light pencil like a B grade pencil, use the side of that pencil when you're applying your shading. So the most difficult part for people is to restrict the pressure that they apply onto the pencil and a few little hacks for that is to use the side of the pencil and to hold your pencil towards the back because this will naturally restrict the amount of pressure that you can apply onto that pencil. And so what this means is that even if your pencil strokes look messy, they need to still be somewhat smooth, but if they look a bit messy, it doesn't matter because you haven't applied a lot of pressure onto that pencil. So they're quite easy to blend out. Whereas if you apply a lot of pressure onto your pencil and you've done those pencil strokes quite hard, then they'll be a lot more stubborn and harder to blend out. So use the side of your pencil to shade in 
where your contours are, your shadowed values. As you can see, right now I'm building up those shadows. But then once you've done that, I'm going in with tissue. And you can see all I did was I used my finger on the bit of tissue and I just went in circular motions and blended it out. That's it. That's all there was to it. And it just created this soft airbrush look to the skin. And it does sort of blur everything in together and soften it all out. But that's why you go in in layers and then darken it up and add more structure and then blend it out again. It's not a one layer process. As I keep saying, with every feature, it's about layering. And I find that people don't layer because they rush it. They just rush their drawings. That's as simple as it is. That don't version took me 30 minutes, if that. This do version took me seven hours. So a massive difference. And that is simply because people want to rush through it. They want to get it done that night. They don't necessarily do multiple sittings on one drawing if you're a beginner. You just want to get something done. Whereas it is a slow process. Realism isn't a quick thing to do. If you want to get drawings done quick, and sometimes you don't want to be spending hours on one piece of artwork. Sometimes you want to just get something done quickly. And so if that's what you want to do, then realism might not be necessarily for you and the right style for you. Because it doesn't lend itself to naturally being something that you can do really quickly. It does take time. Even if you do something small, if you're trying to do it realistically, it does take time to do well. So what I'm doing is, even if I want to build up some shadows, I leave that to the last minute. I went in with a bit of black pencil and I use that to darken up some of the shading by her cheeks. Also, what I didn't do with the dope version is I didn't add little details. I just left the skin kind of plain. I added a bit of shading, but I didn't look at the details and sort of different blemishes or freckles, moles or anything like that on the skin. And so she had a few little subtle sort of, I don't know if they're moles or like freckles, but different little textures to the skin. And so this will make your drawing look a lot more realistic if you can focus and notice those little tiny details on the skin, like any specific sort of creases in the skin or wrinkles, that is so important to making it look realistic and taking it up that extra level. Also, the hairline, this is a big deal when it comes to making something look realistic. You need to have a natural transition between the hair and the skin, the forehead. Otherwise, it'll look like the hair is a wig basically plonked on top of the head. You need to make it look like a really nice transition. And so to do that, it's where the hairline comes into play. You need to add those loose hairs, those strands of hairs that overlap onto the skin, onto the forehead and that shadow to make it look natural, to make it look like the hair is part of the head, part of the skin. What I'm doing now is when I created those highlights on the forehead, last time I used a Tombow Mono Eraser and that creates harsh highlights and that's good for the eyes or whatever where it's small but when you're doing skin go in with a kneaded eraser and lightly use that and dust that over the drawing and that will lightly lift off some of the graphite without it being too strong and then you can go in with the tissue and just glaze over that if it's a bit too bright. But moving on to the hair, something that people really struggle with, especially if there's a lot of hair, because again, a lot of hair takes a long time and people just rush through it, shade it all in, do that back and forth motion. But here are the basics to drawing the hair. Firstly, I went in, I just used the black pencil for this, one pencil and a blending stump. Her hair was very dark, so it was a lot more, it was simpler to do this hairstyle than if it was, had sort of more values because hers was basically pretty much black anyway. There wasn't a lot of change in values. But when I did my initial sketch, what I did was I shaded in and I blocked in all of the main sections of the hair. So all of the main clumps. And that is important. You need to draw your hair in terms of clumps. As I always say in my videos, that is one of the main things. Drawing it in terms of sections rather than loads of loose strands of hair. And also trying to think of it in terms of like clumps that go in, in a direction. They are moving sort of shapes and masses of hair and they're going in a direction. They grow in a direction, they're falling in a direction. So make sure you're looking at the curved direction they're going in and when you're doing it, make it look natural, like a nice flow to the curve, don't just do it really rigid. 
So what I'm doing basically is I go in with my black pencil and I first sort of mark out the structure of the hair. I get in the darkest areas and I kind of transition between the outer edges into the middle. The middle of each section was more of the highlighted area where it was a slightly lighter value. And so I take my sharp black pencil and what I do is I use lines. I don't use circular motions. I don't go back and forth. I use lines that flow from one end towards the middle. So either end towards the middle. I'm looking at the reference image and I look to see where the darkest areas are and where it's more highlighted. And when it starts to go from really shadowed into the more highlighted area, I fade out my pencil strokes at different points so that I get a natural sort of highlight look. And then what I do is you can see at the moment I'm doing that, I'm going from one end to the other, fading it out in the middle. And then what I do is I blend some of that pencil from those shadowed areas into those highlighted areas where I haven't applied any pencil. Because what this does is it gives a natural tone and it tones those highlighted areas. Because even the highlights aren't directly just white, they have tone to them. So what I'm doing now is adding flyaway hairs. And with the last drawing, what I did was I did them too harsh. They were too sort of thick and the pencil wasn't sharp enough and it wasn't light enough. They were just dark and thick, they weren't natural. When you're doing flyaway hairs, which are important to making it look less uniformed, what I do is I go in with first the, gray, the B grey pencil, the lighter pencil, and I use that to add some really soft light sort of flyaway hairs, they're thin because the pencil's harder so they're thinner and I get some natural looking distant flyaway hairs because it's a lot lighter. And then I go in with a slightly darker pencil like a 4B and I use that again to add some of the darker flyaway hairs and then I might use the black to add the darkest flyaway hairs. But by using those different grades in pencils it means that you get a sort of hierarchy and a sort of layers of those flyaway hairs because you've got the lighter ones that are more in distance all the way up into the black ones which are right in the forefront you can really see them they're really popping and it gives those layers and that depth to the hair that you're looking for if you want to make it look realistic. So I basically did the exact same thing for the bottom of the hair. It's those exact same processes and techniques just over and over again for each section. But what I did do differently on the bottom section is I took the Tombow Mono Eraser and I added some flyaway hairs over the top. But all in all, those are my tips for how you can improve your drawing. Like I said, the real-time version, if this was too fast for you, is over on my Patreon. As well as loads of other real-time tutorial series for you guys. Whether that's in graphite, colour pencil, markers, watercolours. Whether it's animals, portraits, there's so many available on my Patreon. So if you're new around here and you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that subscribe button. But I will see you guys in my next video. Bye everybody.